electron equation can be balanced by adding the appropriate numbers of water molecules to balance out oxygen atoms, hydrogen ions to balance out hydrogen atoms, and electrons to balance out the overall charge. The little trick is always to add the electrons to the side which has a higher overall charge. So let's have a go at balancing the equation of SO3 2 minus changing to SO4 2 minus. So the first thing we have to do is balance all elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. So we're looking at the sulfurs. We've got one sulfur on the reactant side of the SO3 and we've got one sulfur on the product side. So those are balanced. What we can see, however, is on the left hand side, we've got three oxygens and on the right hand side, we've got four oxygens. That doesn't balance. So as a result, we have to add a water molecule to the left hand side. So that means that we have now got a total of four oxygen atoms on the left and four oxygen atoms on the right. What we've done, however, is we've introduced the element hydrogen in the form of a water molecule. So to balance this out, we have to add a hydrogen ion to the right hand side. In the water, however, we've got two hydrogen atoms. So therefore, we have to have two hydrogen ions to balance those out. The next thing that we want to do is we want to look at the overall charge. So we start from left. Water has an overall charge of zero. In the SO3, two minus, overall charge two minus. Zero plus two minus gives us a total charge on the left-hand side of two minus. The SO4, we've got a charge of two minus. The hydrogen ion inside the box, we've got plus one, but we've got two of those. So that gives us an overall charge of two plus. If we've got two minus plus two plus, that gives us an overall charge of zero. Which number is higher, two minus or zero? Zero is the highest side, so this is the side we're going to add the electrons to. We have to balance out the overall charge. So how many electrons am I going to have to add for zero to get to negative two? We're going to have to add two. And this is the overall balanced ion electron equation. So if you want to have a go at this, you can pause the video and then press resume to go through the answer together and you can check your working. So we've got MnO4 on the left, changing to Mn2+. First thing we have to do is double check that the elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen are balanced. We've got one Mn on the left and one Mn on the right, which means our manganese is balanced. We've got four oxygens of the permanganate on the left hand side. So that means we're going to have to add water to the right hand side to balance it out. How many oxygens have we got on the left? We've got four, which means we're going to have to have four water molecules to balance out the oxygens. What we've done is we've introduced the element hydrogen to the right hand side of the page, which means we're going to have to add hydrogen ions to the left hand side. What's the total number of hydrogen atoms we've got on the product side? Well, we've got two hydrogens which are found in one water molecule. That's inside the box, but we've got four water molecules. So four times two gives us eight, which means we have to have eight hydrogen ions on the left hand side to balance those out. What we want to do is the overall charge now. We'll work from left to right. For the hydrogen ion, we've got one plus inside the box times by eight outside the box gives us an overall charge of eight plus. For the permanganate, we've got a one minus inside the box. So if we get eight plus plus, take away one gives us an overall charge of seven positive. The manganese is a two plus and water doesn't have a charge. So the overall charge on the product side would be two plus. We need to decide which side has the higher overall charge. 7 plus or 2 plus, 7 plus is higher, so that's where we're going to add the electrons. Remember, electrons are negatively charged, so that's a takeaway. What number of electrons am I going to have to add to get 7 to 2? We're going to have to add 5 electrons. If you want to double check your answer, you can always use page 13 of the Higher Chemistry Data Booklet, which gives us the balanced equation that we've worked out. So the first thing that we want to do is always balance the elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. On the left hand side, I've got two CRs and on the right hand side, I've got one. Those don't balance, so I have to put a two outside the box on the right hand side. Now that the chromiums are balanced, I can look at my oxygen. On the left hand side, I've got seven oxygens. On the right, I've got no oxygen, so I have to add a water molecule. And because I've got seven oxygens on the left, it means I've got to have seven 
water molecules to balance out the oxygens. On the right hand side I've introduced the element hydrogen which means on the left hand side I have to add hydrogen ions. How many hydrogens do I have on the right? I've got two inside the box times by seven outside the box. That gives me 14, which means I have to have 14 hydrogen ions to balance those out. Let's do the overall charge. Plus inside times 14 gives 14 plus. We've got a two minus in for the dichromate, which gives us an overall charge on the left hand side as 12 positive. On the right hand side, I've got three plus inside the box for the chromium. But I've got that multiplied by 2 in the outside, so that gives us an overall charge of 6 plus. And the water doesn't have a charge, so 0 times 7 is 0. And the overall charge on the right hand side would be 6 plus. Which number is higher? That's 12 plus, so that's where the electrons are going to go. I need to think about 12, how do I get to 6? I would need to take away 6. Remember, electrons are negatively charged, so I'm going to have to have 6 electrons on the left hand side. This past paper question is from the higher 2016 multiple choice 18. During a redox process, an acid solution, chlorate ions, ClO3- are converted into chlorine, Cl2. Uh, the number of hydrogen and water required to balance the ion electron equation for the formation of one mole of Cl2 are respectively. So we're going to do the same process. We firstly have to balance all elements that are not hydrogen or oxygen. On the left hand side we've got one chlorine, on the right hand side we've got two. So I need to put a big two in front of the box of the ClO3-. What I need to do then is balance out the oxygens. On the left hand side I've got three oxygens, on the right hand side I've got no oxygen. So I have to add a molecule of water. How many oxygens do I have on the left? Well I've got three inside the box multiplied by two outside the box which gives me a total of six oxygens which means I have to put a big six in front of the H2O. I've introduced the element hydrogen. So on the right hand side, I'm going to have to add hydrogen ions. How many hydrogen atoms do I have on the right hand side? Well, I've got two inside the box for H2O multiplied by six. That gives me a total of 12. So I need to put a 12 in front of the H plus. We're going to do overall charge. For the hydrogen ions, we've got 12 plus. For the chlorate ion, we've got two minus. That gives us an overall charge of 10 positive. On the right hand side, chlorine doesn't have a charge, so it's zero. Water doesn't have a charge, zero times six is zero, which gives us an overall charge of zero. So how many electrons would I have to add to the left hand side? I would need to add 10 electrons to get it down to the charge of zero. And therefore, the question asks us for H plus and H2O respectively, which means in that order, we can see we've got 12 hydrogen ions, 6 waters. So the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer D. This past paper question is from the higher 2012 multiple choice 9. During a redox process in acid solution, iodate ions, IO3 minus, are converted into iodine I2. The numbers of H plus and H2O required to balance the ion electron equation for the formation of one mole of I2 are respectively. So firstly, we have to balance all the elements which are not oxygen or hydrogen. So on the left, we've got one iodine and on the right hand side, we've got two. So we need to put a big two in front of the iodate on the left hand side. We can see that we've got oxygen atoms on the left hand side of the equation, which means we have to add a mo water molecule to the right hand side. How many oxygens have we got on the left? We've got three inside the box multiplied by two outside the box. That gives us a total of six, which means we have to have six water molecules on the right-hand side. We've introduced the element hydrogen, which means we have to add hydrogen ions to the left-hand side. How many hydrogens do we have on the product side? We've got two inside the box of the water multiplied by the six outside, which gives us a total of 12, which means we have to add the 12 hydrogen ions to the left-hand side. Let's do the overall charge. For the hydrogen ions, we've got a charge of 12 plus. The iodate, we've got a charge of 2 minus, which gives us an overall charge on the left-hand side as 10 positive. On the left, the iodine doesn't have a charge, so that's overall charge of 0. Water is 0, 0 times 6 is 0, which gives us an overall charge of 0. And which side has got the higher charge? That's the left-hand side, so that's where we're going to put the electrons. And we have to add 10 electrons to balance that out. So the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer D.